Hello people, this is John Spielman with the video version of my latest column, not my agony column, my column. And I'm just going to see now to check that I am recording, and I am. Good. So it's the first column of the year, and a happy new year to people. And God knows 2020 was pretty ghastly. Um, I've, at the moment, my preliminary title for the column is Backwards and Forwards, which isn't fantastic. Um, um, I thought of saying something like the unspeakable you, with a, with a you either capitalised or otherwise. And it's the second paragraph. I said something about that people use a word which starts on and then and ends TED. And it's a word that politicians have been using, particularly in Britain, if you're in Britain, about everything to justify their, their total incompetence at everything. And so I've advocated public execution. So rather than saying the word in full, this is for public use of the word, I decided that probably I don't really want to have to start topping myself on the screen and therefore I shall merely give it a nod. Right, there we are. So it's the time for looking both backwards and forwards. And um, we'll have to give a summary of 2020. There were just a few tournaments over the board, big tournaments. There have been some open tournaments and some league chess. There was Vikan Zay, which Fabiano Caruana won. He, he was fantastic. He didn't start particularly quickly, but after actually he'd managed to save a game against Magnus Carson, he finished with, I think, seven and a half out of eight or something. There was the candidates, of course, which got halfway through. And the final round of that, um, uh, MVL, Maxim Vashir Lagrave beat Nipom this year, beat Nipa. And that's one of my games I'm giving here because it has such had such big political implications on the possible political manoeuvres after the first half was abandoned. Had people said, oh, it's just impossible to resume, we'll have to take the midterm result, then that obviously changed completely after this last round game. And there was Beale, which was won by Pantella Harry Krishna ahead of Michael Adams, and um, they played with screens in between the part. I had a chat with Mickey about this. Um, apart from the Blitz, where they just thought if you play Blitz underneath the screen, you're going to get just hurt people's hands. So I'm not quite sure what they did for that. There's also the Norway tournament, which actually I originally forgot, which is a bit disgraceful. I was thinking I must have missed something out, and I'd missed out actually the strongest one of all, which was won by Carson. Eventually they played this thing where they played games and they also, if the games were drawn, they played Armageddon or something. Sounds very odd. Or did they play two game matches and then Armageddon? I can't remember. No, one game, I think. And um, then there's the Russian Championship, which was won by uh, Nipo after Dubov beat Kadiakin in the final round. I think Dubov's a fantastic player. He's certainly not stable yet. In terms of his play, I mean, he lost uh, to Rajabov, didn't he? Um, a few days ago, uh, as I speak, in the um, online tournament, the air things, and but he beat Carson earlier in that tournament, which is fantastic. And I think he's, you know, really, really talented guy, and he's one of the people I've mentioned here, and I've also given his game against Kadiakin with his ridiculous opening uh, play, which, you know, I mean, the thing is, there are lots of openings which are sort of playable, and normally they're played by weak players, so you, so they don't reach their potential, but if you've got a very strong player playing a totally wind-up opening, it's a bit of a problem for his opponents, really, because, you know, not fun to have to deal with. Anyway, that's there. I also mentioned the online stuff. Carson basically won most of this. Nakamura won some of it. I'm afraid it does uh, blur into it itself a little bit in my memory. I do remember the final of the Carson tour, the Carson Nakamura match. That was fantastic. The one where Nakamura matched him for thirty something games, then Carson managed to lose, managed to draw the Armageddon to win the match. But basically. Nakamura showed just how fantastic he is. Of course, Nakamura is now 
streaming online, the online game community thinks he's a streamer who plays chess rather than a chess player who streams. And I think he said in the week in chess something about how when he lost his match to uh, Aronium, he raised $355,000, I think, for a charity during the stream. And you just think, Struth, that's a big deal now. Anyway, I've done that. And then I've said, well, th there was plenty of chess, even with what we're used to. And I've done this most of the top of my head. And originally I'd left out Norway. So please complain if I've missed something important out. And then this year we'll have Vikanze. That is definitely going to happen, I believe, over the board. The candidates will presumably resume at some point. The Olympiad's supposed to be in Moscow in the summer. I suppose it will happen. Maybe the Norway tournament. And there'll be lots of online stuff. And then I just summarised. And I'll read. Carlson dominated the Ether in 2020, though Nakam Mura ran him very close over an extended match and Ferruja began to show his mettle. Oh, I forgot to mention here that Ali Reja Ferruja, of course, is a terrific blitz and also even better bullet player. And he beat up Carlson very, very significantly over 200 games in April. And by the way, there's a video you can watch of that. About four hours of them beating the hell out of each other. I always think the bullet chess... Most people can't do it. I'm, I'm, I can watch it perfectly well, but I'm not quick enough with a mouse. But the very top players can do it, though not even all of them is, are so good. I think, is it Caruana is not that good at it, relatively? And it's, it's odd that it's become something which, 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 which is now important in terms of money-making in tournaments. You know, there are, there are events where they have to play bullet as well. Uh, okay, I reiterated the MVL and Nipo leading the candidates. Jubov was fantastic at times. Then I said, well, the interesting thing is who will emerge in 2021? Somebody we haven't seen before at that level, the very, very top level, will emerge and will start doing fantastic things. And we'll have to see who it is. Right, so I've got four games. Um... And obviously they're games that have appeared before. And I'm going to probably not say that much about them. This is MVL against Nipo. And I said basically, well, I hate the Vinava for both sides. I hate White's Queen side. I hate Black's Black Squares. So it's a position I don't play for either side. Uh, and there we are. So I don't... They used to, Queen G4 used to be the main move. But, you know, of course there are many different moves six uh cd4 i mean you know who knows have i just yeah this is a line i've given some lines and this one is critical probably if black can do it so this was takes takes queen checks bishop take out of three check Obviously, if black can get away with this, then it's nice to have taken the d-pawn. question whether you can or not is not clear. So, you know, you ask an engine. I mean, I'm lazy about things like this. Something like this, I just ask the engine and it tells me something. And I think, all right, master, you're probably right. So master, I think, is telling me at least if I turn it on for a short time, this is okay. It's possible... That suddenly it'll go ping and notice that there's a big problem. Um, it's claiming that black is okay here, which is interesting. Because obviously as black you'd be frightened. Okay, well, we'll keep the engine on. And they played some moves. I think king f8 may be better at once. I don't really see rook to there. Check. I mean, bishop d3 is interesting. And then one thing you can do... Um, bishop a6 which is not stupid and okay you've got a well, black's got all the white squares on the board now and that may or may not be enough to be compensation for the exchange as I said I find it difficult to tell um, I think the engine is only giving a slight advantage to white so it thinks that this is quite a big deal that uh, black is active and has the white squares i mean i'd find it hard to assess but i can, of course i understand what the compensation is i just it's hard to judge 
just how significant that compensation is. Um, okay. Anyway, he played. I mean, you can go. You can go bishop d3, king f8 as well, of course. Uh, you could do this first. Probably, perhaps he would have done that. And then played bishop a6 next move. Of course. Okay. King f8 played, bishop d3. The idea was to induce bishop d7 with check. So if bishop d7, you go bishop d3, and the bishop can't go to a6, because that ain't how the, how the thing moves. Um, here he got this in. I don't know if he should have taken on d4 and then played bishop a6. Obviously that sort of relieves white's queenside in some ways, but it also stops white playing this move d takes c5. He took. So if you look at this position, white's actually only moved one piece. Obviously many pieces have gone and come and gone and done stuff. The rook to b1, black's got his knights out and moved his rook and his king. If if white had a sensible setup on the king side, sorry, if black had a sensible setup on the king side, like a king say on h8 and the rook and g8, then of course he'd be doing really well. Because by the time white set up threats on the king side, Black would have started serious queenside play. As it is, that king is really pretty awful on f8, uh, blocking in the rook. And Black may have to play f6 in order to get him out. When he does so, he'll leave his king a bit weak, still. Um, so it's just a difficult position. And, you know, the exact assessment is very hard to make. I mean, I keep on writing things saying this move gets well gets a space advantage in the queen side as well, but it weakens the dark squares. Who knows? There are probably some really decent notes to this somewhere, but I'm using my notes which I made at the time. That's a good move. That's saying if you want to take, then you're very welcome. If knight takes pawn takes rook takes queen c3 wins, which is important, and so you have to go back, and obviously you get huge compensation and I think f5 is actually even better than not doing it and take take is given here I'm not quite sure why and you've got a huge initiative I mean, it's just you know you look at this position and okay black's the exchange up but I mean his position apart from that is utterly and totally repulsive so it's not surprising that the engines go ping and say you're in big trouble. I mean bishop b4 looks like it's going to leave f7 really weak. Of course if the black knight was an e6 then black would be doing perfectly okay. These things, I assume, um, these things are very, <coughs> are very delicate. What happened? They played some moves. I thought he might take on pass on play f5 but he didn't move going going to come to the diagonal and they got to this position and with one tempo more black would have a good game actually he'd be winning a piece wouldn't he but i mean okay you know even if he couldn't play rook takes b5 but it's white to move and white is able to smash it up g4 good positional move i know it's in front of the king but you just have to do it you've got the space advantage and this is really really dangerous for black because the queen's going to come in, they're going to play f5, and you're going to do bad things, is the idea. Now, now it's a mistake. He should have gone g6. And g6, uh, I've got some variations here. Quite sure you don't play knight f5 here. Oh, what happens if the knight f5? Oh, you just go king e6, don't you, and cause cause a major incident. Because if we, yeah, okay. And our, our original idea was h4. 
and it turns out that this ending is good for white. It's very messy, of course. And then basically you land in the strongest possible terms. I think that's probably just the queen, isn't it? That was one line, and there was another line. Um, uh, actually, uh, well, I suppose I've misspelled actually as I would tend to. There. Um, and this is really complicated, I mean, not at all obvious. I got some position like this, and this is clearly better for white. White is more or less in control now. With only one pass pawn, you're going to be able to fight your way around and take it, and black will try to put the knight in d5 and fight, but okay, it's better for white. So then actually what happened was he went queen b6, takes here, here, and basically white won this. The knight on g3 is fantastic, stopping the king. Uh, I think Nupo tried g5 here, which is completely desperate. And he resigned because he's going to lose a lot more material. So, um, a... Um, I mean, he's going to go queen g4 e6, isn't he? He's going to have to try to. That's not even interesting. Um, so, very, very tough game. Very, very complicated. Still don't really understand, even when looking with an engine, after looking with an engine. But I do, I can see what's going on in the complications, of course, because they're the easiest thing to comprehend. And a very important game from the point of view of the year. So the next one is Dubov Kardiakin, and that, this is this mad game. And what I've said, I think, you know, the important thing is that chess is played between people. It doesn't matter what the machines that say to go beef have to say about them for themselves. Of course, CD4 is the main move here, and E5 is also played fairly often. And we'll actually correct. It's also played fairly often. Uh, but this is very rare and admittedly not as not an e4 player i'd never seen it um before so engines i'm gonna have to correct this engines are pretty down in it they really don't like it much but who cares it was a fantastic choice um Sniffy, I used, yeah. Uh, as a choice to wrong foot Kodiak, and it was inspired, yeah. So, I mean, basically what I'm saying is that if you're playing a game of chess against another human being, then even if the engines go ping and jump up and down and squeak at you, it doesn't really matter. Bishop B7, I think, may be a better move. There's this line. Now, probably D5 here. And that's going to be all right, presumably. I haven't. I mean, I haven't checked very carefully at all. But my impression is it should be okay. Um, you know. But he. I mean, you know, you don't play g6 though, because I think then um, if you play g6, then. This is really unpleasant because the diagonal is a really scary diagonal. And, you know, black's pieces all over the place. Okay, anyway. They played some moves. And here black should have gone g5, which is difficult. I mean... So, so if bishop g3... And black gets his pieces out. He's going to be all right, isn't he? Presumably, he's going to be very okay. Takes, I assume, do you go push b6 or do you castle? I haven't actually gone past here, so let's just go past here. Let's take. 
castles. And basically the claim is that by the time white gets sorted, black is going to be very okay. Um, I mean, I think you'd want to play this move, but unfortunately this one just doesn't work at all. I mean, maybe there's knight f7, queen h4, queen takes d5, but rook, rook f8, it looks like black has the initiative then, really, to me. Um, I mean, white is... Let's try, though. Knight f7. I mean, I mean, knight h8, I don't believe, so let's try this. I mean, knight d6 is not going to work, is it? You can hide in d8. f2 is loose. All sorts of stuff is going on. Basically, black is going to be winning this. Um, okay. And so it goes like this. And now white's... So this went g5, takes, takes, queen h5 you want to play. And it just turns out it doesn't work. I mean, look to there, queen to there. Black's, what is he, probably a pawn up and a piece, a piece and a pawn. And I mean, rook takes is what you want to do. But after this, it just doesn't work. Um, Black's king is sufficiently okay. And lots of, lots of bad things are happening to white. Um, you can, yeah, they're, 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 I mean, you need... You'd need to get a knight d6 check and rook e1 or something in pawn takes knight to, to really make this work. And You know, you are a whole rook down, it's not going to work. Okay, so they so g5 is a good move. Um, excuse me, bishop f6 is a lovely move. h8. And, and with a huge attack for a single pawn. God, what the hell is going? Single pawn and attack as well. Um, it just isn't really working for black. So they got to this position and there's a move you really, really want to play. And he just did it, which is very good. He just played... Is rook e6 at all interesting? Oh, is rook e6 and d7? Even given here, let me see. Rook takes, pawn takes, d7, queen f7, pawn equals queen, I suppose. I mean, the thing about this position is that now, okay, white's pulled piece up for a moment, but all these pieces are in a state. Knight f4. Rook takes d8. I mean, you couldn't defend everybody, I don't think. And now we do a uh, body count and black's pawn up for nothing very much. Uh, f 2 is as weak as anything else. But there's the beautiful move, queen g6. And here, probably Kadiakin. Queen f7 is a bit optimistic. I mean, it's reasonable to play this up to here. Things can happen. But queen c6 would have been a practical move. And, I mean, the engine's giving it about half a pawn or so. Okay, white's, white's a pawn up. The a4 pawn's a little bit weak, but f2 is weak. Black's quite active. You can play rook e8 or d8. And basically, okay, it, 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 I mean, it may well be better for white, but I mean, it probably is, but it's still a fight. And that would have been a sensible thing to do, I think. Um, but of course, it's very hard in the game, because if you do do that, you're probably only playing for one result uh, from your point of view, which is to make a draw. You can try bishop f2, but it doesn't really work very well. I mean, yeah, it doesn't work very well. But it's not ridiculous. Oh, queen to the, to the seventh. 
Now you want an exchange back and at the end you take this. And this is really bad I think. By the way if you go bishop f2 then you can play king takes queen c2 bishop d2 resigns. So basically in this position um, white's just got more pieces than black. Because the pawn on c7 is so strong. I'm not sure if bishop f2 made much sense I suppose. He probably thought otherwise he didn't have anything particular to do I'm guessing. So white's improved his pieces, now he goes knight d4. And black basically has to stay on the c file, otherwise there'll be pawn equals queen and rook g7 check. Couldn't play rook takes because of pawn equals queen, of course. And just a tiny closing the mating net and black resigned. So it's a very good game. And then I've got two more games. Uh, I've got one of them, the Nakamura Carson. They played so many games in this match. And this this was the one Nakamura had to win this because uh, Carson was one up on the final day. And this was his last white. I don't like bishop takes e3 very much, but I can see why why he did it. I mean, he's he's trying to trying to minimise any possible damage. That's probably a bit dubious. Weakening the dark squares quite a lot. Round about here it's just very bad for black I think. And night, night G7 I was watching Yasser and somebody else were commentating, were doing the main commentary. I wasn't streaming that day and they were very surprised by night G7 as was I. I mean Nakamura thought for maybe five minutes about this. And actually night E7 check is better. This is a very clean way to play, I think. I mean, none of it's easy, of course. Uh, and here he missed, Carson missed the chance to fight, which was this fine move. And he's fighting here. And C5 is not obvious. I, I, of course, I'm quoting an engine, but um, here. The thing is that knight f5 doesn't actually lead to mate, I don't think. And so black has black has real chances. Um, but he didn't get it very right. So I was thinking he was still fighting, but he played something really nice. He took. He fell into Carson's trap. And here Carson resigned because after That's checkmate. So a very nice game by Nakamura. Remember this is about a 15 minute game and they played a lot of games previously. And I'm going to give one, oh I've noticed weakening. I might as well, sorry. I don't know why I'm doing all this proofreading. I find it hard to do at the time. Um, and then the last game is from the same match, Carson beating Nakamura. So Nimzo Indian. I thought he might go knight a5 and attack this way. I mean, I don't know. It's difficult, of course. Carson open fire with d5, and once you do that, you're committed to doing your stuff, really. So White sacrificed two pawns, but he's made this bishop very proud. Good move. Prepares to play d4 sometimes. Well now immediately in fact. 
So I doubt if Carson considered taking on d4 for more than about a microsecond. Uh, by the way, if bishop takes, knight takes, knight e7 check, if you do this, And you either get to play knight takes rook, uh, you end up with, with a better position as black. I believe that's just clearly better, isn't it? I should maybe have said that, yeah. So you see, we hardly have considered those. And you rook c5, and Nakamura played a6. The engine says that rook e8 is a good idea because it's completely unobvious. Um, the engine says that if Basically, this is okay for black, which I mean, you just don't know at the time. I mean, you hope it is. Uh, I mean, if the engine says it is, I'm sure it's right, but it's hard to tell because, you know, the king's running around and is there a move rook f5 or something, you know, anything to cause some trouble and apparently not. Okay, well, we'll believe them. I mean, I absolutely believe this, this engine, that it's going to be correct about this. It's saying minus plus, but it's not obvious to me at all. And basically, a6 was saying to Carson, come on, sh sacrifice if you dare. And Carson found a way to do it. He thought quite a while. And he found this very fine move, which is much better than queen h6. Is it, why is it much better than queen h6? There is a reason. Which I cannot see at the moment. Rook g8. G8 is okay, but in this position you have rook c6. The point is, uh, if queen h6, rook g8, rook c6, I think there's something you can do. Oh, you, you can't take in d4, of course, that's the whole point. Uh, so, so you need. Uh, to, to be able to take and to take on d4. So he went rook g8, which is a mistake. He should have gone rook e8. And the main point then is that if take, 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 bishop f5, check, king to here, is actually good for... good for um, black. Winning for black, in fact. The back rank trick wins. And you'd have had to either have had to go something like h3, bishop f5, and the game continues. I mean, obviously, white has very decent compensation for a pawn, but maybe not more than that. Probably not more than that. I mean, I don't think you can go bishop d4 check as well. Um, maybe. I can see if bishop d4 check, you go knight g7. Seven, and that's a big problem. Okay, um, so he should have done that, but this happened, and now this lovely move. And basically, what's happened is that White has taken aim. He's threatening Queen H7, mate. He has aimed properly at the relevant sector, and Black has to flee. So I think I got here when I was watching the game, and this isn't so difficult. And you just wonder, how's it going? Is it going to work? And you don't know. I mean, you have to play the moves. Of course, if queen d5, bishop b4, and the important thing is that if queen takes, rook takes, the queen covers um, bishop b4. And if this... Um, and the queen covers this diagonal backwards. That's really important. So they got to here. And in practice this is disgusting. And now he just needed to play bishop d4. And get his pieces out. And he'd have been winning. But he played rook d1 missing rook d6. Quite clearly he missed rook d6. Because he went into a think. And now he gets, now it's not so clear. 
There's of course a quintess queen, there is rook takes rook check, mate. So he had to go bishop d4. He, he did keep his nerve cast and he did well. Um, the engine likes to move h4, a, b4, a, b4, a, b4, queen, b4 and says it's equal. And I suppose you've got a bit more space, the queen is a bit better. Again, it's really hard to tell. Now Carson gets some sort of control again. Obviously h3 is a good idea. And that's a mistake because it blocks the, the a square. Rook d8 would have been okay. And king h2 is completely natural, but actually bishop b5, check here, takes, takes, just because he's lethal forced mate. So, I mean, king h2, which I think Carson played pretty quickly, is the natural move in, in a rapid play game, but wrong. And he blundered with rook d5 and allowed queen a7 check. And since it is mate next move, Nakamura resigned. And this was, I mean, another really fine game. They played a fantastic series. So, um, there we are. We've gone backwards and forwards, we'll see. And I hope that 2001 is much, much better than... 2021 is much better than 2020. Did I say 2001? I believe. And... Um, See you in a fortnight when any suggestions you have in a, for a fortnight, please tell me and otherwise we'll think of something to do. Cheers then and Happy New Year.